I'll, I'll be talking and sharing a, a journey, a personal journey rather than talk about uh, retail lighting. Because although I've done retail lighting, what I'm sharing with you is how light is experienced by me and I hope by all of you. The light, as you see, comes from sun. So why we enjoy the sun is because we are afraid of darkness. Sorry. So will the sun rise again? Will our friend of the dawn come again? Will the power of darkness be conquered by the God of light? So light was always special to me. It was something that we felt comfortable with. And this is from an old Indian Veda, 1500 BC. And there were no electric light and light designs. In sun, in India, sun is generous. It is God of light, and millions of Hindus even today seek their worship. Sun God Surya. Even today, when you are in small towns, small villages, and you sit on the light, electric light in the evening, people will hold their hands as if they're praying to the sun. So that's typical of Indian mentality or Indian sense of uh, believing that sun is protector, sun is God. You can see on rivers, on river banks, even today, people praying to God's sun. If you have been to the city of Banaras, it's, it's, Banaras is as old as Babylon. It's one of the most ancient living cities. And if you are there in the early morning, you will see a wonderful skyline, a beautiful river. The rays of early morning sun spreads across the river and strike the high bank face of the city. It's called Kashi. It's called the city of light. So in India we have a city which is called city of light. The city illuminates truth and reveals, reveals a certain kind of oneness with God. And I think that's very important to understand how light is related to whatever we do as we live our everyday life. People who travel to Agra I'm sure they've seen Taj Mahal. What's interesting about the building of Taj Mahal and it's the reason why it was built on, on the banks of the river. It's the light play from the river on that building that actually stimulates the experience. The colors change. The Taj color changes with the, as, the, as the sun rises and sun sets. It's pinkish in the morning and it sparkles blue in the night light. And I'm sure people who've been to Agra have also gone and seen the Shish Mahal. What's nice about the Agra fort is the material that they've used. They use red Agra stone. And if somebody carefully notices what happens to the, the red, red stone, it changes its color with the way the sunrises and sunsets and it's beautiful. You can see this old painting where they show the port and you see the colors. It's brilliant. That red just becomes almost like golden in, in its uh, hue and intensity. And Shishmael was wonderful and, and I'm sure people here, most of them uh, who have not been there should definitely try and see it. What it did was bring light into a space which was inside the port. It was a kind of a a huge spa in some ways. And they use mirror on the walls to bring in light. They also send precious stones in there and the walls at those days. And you can see what happens with two candlelight, the whole space is lit up. So it's almost like having two LEDs in that space, which would actually light up the spaces and the interior. So how did I get into lighting? My first experience of light was with my grandmother when she used to pray in the evening and she would light a lamp. I could see the lamp, she was playing with the lamp in her hand and waving it around the, the, the icons of God. But when I went to a temple with her, I would see multiplicity of lights. I would see that the play became larger than life. It was, it was almost uh, that I was amazed at the amount of light that has been waved by this priest all around everywhere. 
What was more special was the festival of light. We also have a festival of light in India, which is called Diwali Deepavali. And uh, you could see from satellite what happens to India on that particular day and how the country is lit up and it's brilliant. This is from Google, basically, that I downloaded this image. It's a beautiful image of what is India on that particular night. And we played with light. We were actually allowed to play with light. And I think that is amazing that we were playing with light as kids. I never realized I would become a lighting designer. Well, I would do design and I would do lighting at that point. But when I look back, what excited me was these memories of my growing up in this country. I spent much of my time in the night looking up at the sky. I enjoyed the stars, I enjoyed the darkness. It was beautiful sleeping in the hills right on top of the terrace in the summer night when it was cool and look up into the sky. I think it was really you understood both ends by doing this. Moon fascinated me. But what I also loved, when I was growing up, I was on a painting and I saw this painting which I really remember. I was 13 in that year when I got this book on Van Gogh and I liked this painting. Now, I, I didn't have those connections at that point. So what is sunlight? Sunlight is like a billion watt bulb. A single electric bulb in an Indian home is a replica of the sun. I went to design school, I became a designer, but first coincidentally I went to Philips and I was given a project on lighting. So what I understood was that why in Philips would I design something in India when I had a global office in Holland? What was important was that the ambient temperature in India was different than in Holland. So I had to make a larger box for the same fitting. The same bulb, sodium vapor or halogen. I had to make a larger fitting because otherwise the lamp would fail in the ambient temperature that our country allowed. Context was critical to what I was doing. I understood at that point that context makes the design. If you don't consider the context, your design, the language is universal, but the context is a critical part of what we do in our work. I did many fittings. I realized after many years, almost four or five years, I did torches, lamps. What was I doing there? I was designing forms. I was designing objects with metal, plastic, and nothing was. If you understand light, then you will think of glass, you will think of paper, you will think of fabric. But none of these were being used by industrial manufacturers because they wanted to make mass-produced products for the homes. Instead of thinking about light, I started thinking about object form and costs and, and the shape and packaging. And we forgot the light. The light play was forgotten in the years that I spent in Philips. Of course, I, I, I went out, I, I became a consultant, I started setting up an own office. I worked with a wonderful architect by the name of Nari Gandhi, uh, who was a student of Frank Lloyd Wright. And I worked on many projects for four years before he passed away, unfortunately. On, on site, this is a project that I worked with him on, it is Mud Island project. Uh, we worked on the, it was an incomplete project that he left, and when I started working with him, I worked on this light which was a bathroom, which was a whole room which was kind of lit up from inside. But what were we doing? Did we use artificial lights? No. What we did was we used natural light. On the top of that bathroom was a kind of a sun and this was using beer bottles cut and made into sunflower. So there was an element of sustainability, there was an element of bringing outside in, using daylight into, into environment so that you don't really use lights effectively. What was wonderful again was this reminded me of the time I read the Van Gogh's paintings, the sunflower. And it somehow felt that I was connecting to what, my, what was my natural energy. And I, I was lucky to meet the right people at the right point of view of my life. I ended up being consulted to Philips. I did uh, monument lighting for them. This was uh, Victoria Terminus Station in Bombay. Unfortunately, there were no LEDs. Not many colors of light were available in the LEDs. There was green light, which is metal halide, and uh, uh, sodium vapor light. So I had no choice but to use these two lights. 
these were not the best of lives, but I did this, did this project. I did Jaisalmer Fort. I did Lighting of Chitorgar Fort. I did Birula Temple. So what was important was that there was a kind of uh, play of light on the surfaces. But again, I was limited by the sources that were available to me even at that point. So I again went back and said, what is moonlight? Moonlight is cosmic, cold, frail, moonlight is soft light. At twilight there is no shadow. So actually, I, I did a computer office lighting in Philips where I created uh, work with 3M and created material which had no glare. In those days in the 80s, all the computers were long, uh, did not have non-reflective light, so it was typical of those times. Natural light is constantly viewing the magic of colors. Electric light within the space is neutral, it's constant. It does not, uh, there's no, it be, there's no experiential feeling with constant light. Uh, you have to create a kind of rhythm in that light to create an experience. It's not dynamic. So what is light for the multisensorial interaction? It is cultural, it is emotion, it is sensation together. Emotion, the memory, place, people, light, touch and aroma all together. We are rooted in the continuity of time and it is the task of designer to facilitate this experience. So I, I, I worked at IIT, I continued working with the student, experimenting. And I, I, I was always enjoyed the idea of light filtering through trees and leaves. So I asked my student to observe that light from coming through the trees and make a new form of light. So what did she do? She just made drawing, these black and white drawings. I asked her to go back and experience the colors. And she too made this drawing. What we did was we created screens, large screens for the rooms inside. These were like six feet by four feet screens, which were made. Uh, when, when you make a single screen without any uh, element of uh, threads or uh, mother of pearl or fibers, you find that it looks very boring. So you have to contaminate, you have to bring in contamination bring a certain quality because when you see light, you see light on dust, you see light on elements which, which, are, which are already there in the atmosphere and therefore it creates a certain sense of color. We studied sunset, we created screens, uh, moonlight, but again there was another source which was artificial and man-made, how they merge together. So we can also understand that the, the artificial light that is being used in festivals how that can, that can become part of your internal environments. So, what, what is this new light that we talk about? It should emerge from our memories, imagination and dreams. It should resensitize the architecture in wide sensory intimacy. And this is exactly what we have to do in the spaces where we want to sell our objects. I did a, uh, one of my students did a project with me on the corridor of IIT Bombay. It's a very boring and we go through it in the night. It's very scary to have a constant light and you don't know which door you have to enter, especially if it's a long institution with long corridors and you really, it's, it's really, I had to walk that space for two years and I know how bad it was. So what we tried to do is make life a little more exciting by using this element of time and dynamism on lighting and we created these kind of lights. So every time somebody passed by, he would add a layer. So it was about adding layers like the leaves of the tree, you were adding layers on the floor and then we would change it with colors. This is a student project, somebody who did the project the first time. It's not about being an expert in lighting. So all these projects that you're seeing are students who worked with me and it's their projects, not my work. So I'm saying there's exciting things if you look at them in a different way. This was a wonderful project. This was done in a week's time. This was a girl who comes from Varanasi and uh, she lived near the river bank and uh, she used water as a starting point. project done by waste water bottles and they were allowed to move with the breeze of the fan and when there was a movement you could actually feel 
the water outside. So we used very small lamps and those lamps were the rice lamps which had different colors and we put coke paper in front of those bottles. And this was done in three days. It was kind of a screen but it actually reminded me of painting the Monet. You know, so to me it was very important how these things were coming together. This was the lights again using water. These were about 40 feet lamps that we did for our exhibition a fashion show which again used the element of water and how the water movement because of light could be created on vertical surfaces. This is fabric, pure khadi, white, with which we made these lamps. And by just play of light, we had created a wonderful one hour, one hour of show and these colors were changing over the time. This is another project, this is cinnamon. Uh, this is a real cinnamon cut onto a sheet of paper and a lamp is made. So what you get is an aroma. When it heats up, it kind of creates a kind of, it's more like a ragabati, but so we, we have that in a, it's, it's, it's wonderful because when you created the lamp and brought the class, the aroma and the feeling that you felt like having coffee, you know, for example. This was using marbles. It was done on a window and the play of shadow was what made this lamp beautiful. So every time there was sunrise and sunset, the, the shadows would change. This was a song line. This was done from a computer uh, values of a word song. And we had cut the uh, we cut acrylic and layered them together. And if I had used the whole thing, it would have gone on for about 10 feet. We did a section of that word song uh, and created this lamp. This was gaming tables that we created. I believe this two space is going to bring in a lot of lights for us. Uh, if you look at uh, today's shopping environment, especially when I go and I don't like shopping, I would open my phone. So you'll see hundreds of people standing in the mall looking at the phones. They're never really shopping. They're looking outside. So what is this new phenomenon? So we'll have all kinds of lights. We'll carry light in our pocket. We already do. And we're switching on, switching off. So there are small lights in our hands every now and then. So it's not about environment, it's about light that we all be carrying with us. So this is a new phenomenon that I think we all have to worry about and look into. This was another a very interesting lamp this was. This was a girl who liked going out on the, in Singapore when it rained. And in Singapore it rains every evening almost. So she would take a car and what was what fascinated her was was the kind of light she would see on the reflective water on the surface of the road. And she created this lamp. It was a beautiful lamp. I'm sorry, I don't have a film for this. But the movement of those dots really make you feel as if you're going for a drive on a rainy day on a street of Singapore. How did she make it? It was very simple. She made three layers of screens, drilled holes on them on a laser machine and put them together. And there was a movement in the light that was behind. So it's important to understand that just by adding one single aspect of moving the light, we created a wonderful uh, new ways of looking at light. And I think that will be beautiful in, in the ways the gaming industry is working and the ways retail, e-retail would work as we go forward. This was a cushion, uh, somebody who loved to sleep in the cushion, it just had a light inside, it was a battery, so we, she, she wanted to sleep, wake up in the night, she would press the cushion, the light was on. So it was a kind of night light for the baby that she was going to have. Wearable lights, so we have wearables, we, we have wearable lights. So this is a gown done in a week by a student, uh, all in paper, all by one person, and this is what he did. So you move. So we have a light to the body. This is another project uh, which was reflecting light. Now this is about reflection and capturing light and although it's a thing starting this was a student project, I think this project holds a huge potential for the future. This is almost shadows in space which are moving. Sorry, the music is not synced in. It's a different music that's which on here. So this was done uh, as a project, but I think this project was a huge potential for the way I'm looking at the future. Uh, 
uh, you see what he did was he used a reflective plate and then he used different films and he controls the movement. Now if you use a computerized control movement you can actually sync it beautifully and you can have 3D images inside the room rather than having a flat light. So from flat light to 3D light, I thought this was a wonderful journey for me. At Whirlpool what do we do? Uh, I, I work for Whirlpool now and we use, we are looking at future concepts which actually will use light for cooking and keeping things in a certain way. Sorry, the sound is not there, so you just have to see this is the last film that I have. The light is letting you know whether the area is warm or cool. So we're using light to actually simulate so that you don't make mistakes. If it's a warm drink, there's a kind of warm light on the glass underneath. And, it, and there are sensors which will actually tell you that the surface is warm or cool. objects that you will see, you will see the e-retail space will also change. So the world is very dynamic and if we are not fast enough to accept the change and, and look at things beyond what we have been doing, I think we will uh, not be the best uh, for the, the new generation. India is very young and I, I, I see that in the next 10 years our consumer will be more computer savvy than any, any other parts of the world. So e-retail and the digital space will become so critical that to keep them interested and glued on to their phones or to their we you will have to create games, we will have to create moods, we will have to create personal lights, we will have to create personal environments. And I think, for me, that's the future. Thank you so much.